Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black discard control deck titled Fright or Flight, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around the newly printed Turgrid God of Fright, a 5 mana 4 5 legendary god with menace, saying whenever an opponent sacrifices a non token permanent or discards a permanent card, we can put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. And Turgrid can also be played as Turgrid's Lantern, as it's one of these dual faced gods from Kaldheim, and Lantern is 4 mana for a legendary artifact that we can tap to make target player lose 3 life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. And for 3 and a black we can also untap Turgrid's Lantern, so we can potentially use it multiple times in the same turn if we have the mana for it. So Turgrid's incredibly powerful if we can build around the ability and we've got plenty of discard effects and sacrifice effects to synergize with it. And then being able to play either Lantern or Turgrid also mitigates some of the awkwardness of drawing multiples of the same legendary. Then some other cool interactions worth pointing out if we have Turgrid in play, if the opponent sacrifices a Fabled Passage, we will also gain control of it once it goes to the graveyard, and same goes for opposing Sagas that reach the final chapter, those also get sacrificed so we can also gain control of them with Turgrid, which can be quite powerful. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got some cheap removal with 2 copies of Blood Chief's Thirst, can also be kicked to take out some larger creatures or planeswalkers, 2 copies of Cling to Dust, since we are playing a lot of discard effects, the opponent's graveyard is going to be nice and full for us to use Cling to Dust, potentially draw some extra cards or exile some escape creatures that we don't want the opponent getting back. Then at 2 mana we've got a bunch of these creatures that make the opponent discard a card when they enter the battlefield, with a full playset of Elder Fang Disciple from Kaldheim, a 1-1 Elf Cleric that when it enters the battlefield makes each opponent discard a card, as well as the full playset of Acquisitions Expert, a 1-2 Human Rogue, that when it enters the battlefield, the target opponent reveals a number of cards from their hand equal to the number of creatures in our party, and we've got both Rogues and Clerics, with Disciple being a Cleric, to help us fill out our party, and then we can choose one of the revealed cards and make the opponent discard that card. So we've got those two discarding creatures, which also synergize nicely with some of the other cards in the deck, as we'll see. We've got more spot removal with Heartless Act, as well as the full playset of Maze Mind Tome as a nice card draw engine, can help us cry to hit our land drops and then draw some additional cards in the late game, as well as give us a bit of life gain. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Palaka Predation, which can be played as a tap land Palaka Caverns or as a discard spell, so that can also synergize with Turgrid. And then the full playset of Soul Shatter, which is an instant speed removal spell, making each opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. So this is very synergistic with Turgrid, as we can potentially steal the opponent's largest creature if we play Soul Shatter with Turgrid in play. And it's also a card that's pretty well positioned right now with people trying out the newly printed 5 mana dragon, which gives the opponent a treasure token if we try to target it, and Soul Shatter gets around it. And then we've got the full playset of Heraldic Banner, giving our black creature plus one plus so, which turns some of these discard creatures into actual threats, and can also potentially cast a one mana spell like Thirst or Cling to Dust after we've played our Heraldic Banner on turn three, making it very mana efficient. And then at 4 mana we've got a Rankle, Master of Pranks, which is also very synergistic in the deck as a 3-3 a legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste, and whenever Rankle deals combat damage to a player, choose any number between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature. So we've got these discard creatures that we don't mind sacrificing to Rankle, and that also synergizes with Turgrid as well as the discard effect, and it also mitigates drawing multiple Rankles as we can just discard one to the ability, and then the full playset of Turgrid as well as 14 basic swamps, 4 copies of Castle Lochthwain, which is an important card to help us refuel in the late game if we're empty-handed, and 4 copies of Crawling Barons, which can also double up as a win condition. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a Keepable Hand. Can use Tome to hit our land drops, and then we've got Disciple to synergize with the Rankle's Sacrifice ability. Let's see what we're up against. So we can scry, if we don't find a land we can scry again in our upkeep before taking our draw. Alright, Swamp is good so no need to scry right now. And then typically want to play Disciple first and then Expert. So we get a bigger party, so we can look at more cards. 
opponent discards Kaya, the inexorable. All right. A Righteous Valkyrie, so opponent on maybe a life gain deck. So that will be able to block Rankle, unfortunately, but Heartless Act can take care of it. I guess Banner wouldn't be the worst since it lets my Rankle attack into Valkyrie. Although, just hitting a land might be better here. Because I don't get to do anything besides play Banner. Yeah, let's bottom it. And then Scry again. Thirst doesn't quite do it. Alright, Swamp is good. So first, I guess we can Expert, see what your opponent does, and then Heartless Act. Could hold the Heartless Act, although I expect to probably kill the Valkyrie. Opponent shows two copies of Heliod. Yeah, maybe I should wait just to maybe set up Rankle better. If they play another big flyer, they might attack with Valkyrie and then I can kill the blocker and Rankle can make them sacrifice the second creature. And yeah, there we see the Retribution. So, opponent will gain some life here, which isn't ideal, but it maybe helps me set up an attack with Rankle as we can now kill the 4-4 and make them sacrifice Valkyrie. So, I think that worked out. Sank with all. And then I could scry here. I guess I wouldn't mind hitting a land with Rankle's draw ability. That's fine. So, draw, sacrifice. Probably no discard yet, even though we have a Rankle we could discard. Alright, hopefully they don't have another large angel, and then we can maybe Turgrit, Rankle, can maybe sacrifice once again or discard. Speaker of the Heavens is fine. And a Kick Thirst to deal with Rankle. So we could play another one here. So many options. Opponents at 18. Could play Turgrid. And then keep Rankle for next turn. Because if I Rankle sacrifice now, we don't get the creature back with Turgrid. So I think Turgrid's also just more mana efficient here. And then I'll stay back. One damage is probably not worth it in case they can kill Turgrid. Also, we get the opponent Saga, which is another good reason to play Turgrid here. So. Seeing some of the cool interactions. And her opponent explodes. Well, Turgrid may not seem to have an enter battlefield ability, but if the opponent has a saga about to hit the graveyard, it kind of does. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck. Uh, hand seems keepable enough. Predation, pretty good answer to Yurion before they can flicker their entire board. Although I might have to play one tapped here just to be able to curve out. Disciple gives a sacrifice fodder for Rankle. Should the opponent have any creatures? This card's an omen of the sea. And prophecy now. One top, one bottom. So I could Predation, could wait with Predation until they put Yorion in hand. And then this turn I guess we can cling, see what we get.
So not the most exciting turn 3, but turn 4 and 5 should make up for it. Upon a names omen of the sea. So that's probably what we'll see. Swamp as well, so they're playing a lot of colors. Alright, it's gonna be an Atris instead. So... I guess they have another omen in hand. How do we want to split this? How much do we care about Doom Foretold? It's a little bit annoying. Although we can sacrifice a 1-1. One, one. I don't think I care too much about Satessan Champion. So maybe put Champion face up with Temple. Sure. I don't even have to make the opponent sacrifice with Rankle. We could play Turgrid next turn and then do it. And Plank of Predation can take Omen. Don't mind a discard draw, though. Soul Shatter is also a good one. This opponent can go Champion plus Omen. We get to Turgrid. And Rankle can sacrifice. And then a cool thing about Turgrid is that we get to steal the opponent's Saga as well. So we get a lot of value. So discard. Sacrifice. Do we want to draw? I guess banner I don't mind getting rid of. And then next turn we can Predation plus Soul Shatter. And then do we want to draw? The damage is adding up, I suppose. Get an Atris. And do we want lands or non lands? Probably non lands. Get the opponent Saga. So Turgrid did a lot of work. Gave us a free Atrus and Metamized Prophecy. And then probably Bottom Swamp Key Perdition. Hope that Turgrid survives, although it's gonna get exiled here. Alright, so we don't get multiple turns of Turgrid value, which would have been nice, but still looking decent here. Can hit for 6. Soul Shatter deals with Champion, can have a look in the opponent's hand. So next turn, probably gonna play Inquisition's Expert. This turn, we Predation could also attack with Crawling Barons. That would be 6, 7 from Rankle, plus 2. 9 damage, put him to 2. I think I prefer Predation Soul Shatter here. Or maybe double Predation, we'll see. Alright, Nightmare, Nightmare, those we don't care about. Archon and Gergroth, on the other hand, are kind of scary. So... I suppose we can let them keep one of those creatures and then just Soul Shatter it. Or I can just double Predation and take both creatures, which is maybe safest. And then they can have their Satessan Champion for an extra turn. Could also Expert and then Sacrifice Expert, make him Sacrifice Champion. 
that doesn't sound too bad. There's upside to using my non-creature spells now when Conqueror's Dust is about to go to two, though. So just take Gargroth. And then I think I want to draw, so we put the point to four and rankles lethal by himself. And then probably nothing else. So now rankles lethal. They didn't have an answer in hand last turn. And if they Yorion, we can soul shatter. Although I guess Yoron can flicker Conqueror's Death, but then we still have Atris, so if they get rid of Rankle, I guess they can go to one. I'm assuming they actually exile Atris here, because that can still hit them. goes for Rankle anyway. I guess we also have a Crawling Baron, so... Got a few options here. Banner just kills him, because that pumps Atris, so that's easy. But it would have been interesting otherwise. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a very controlling hand. Don't hate it. Can make a bunch of mana with banner to eventually sink into crawling barons, and we've got a lot of removal in the meantime. So I think I gotta play this tanked. Hushbringer we can deal with. Wait and see what they play first. Although Hushbringer would be pretty effective against my discard creatures. Second Hushbringer. I can kill the first. Banner plus Cling to Dust is pretty efficient here. Alright, so it's just blue white flyers. Makes sense. At least Soul Shatter gets around the protection from Skybonder. Exile Rune, Heartless Acts, or I guess the opponent's Fabled Passage. So I can have a look with Predation. Although... Probably better off using Soul Shatter now to get rid of Skybonder. And then maybe Heartless Act as well. Watcher of the Spheres, good target for a Heartless Act. Kill it now in case they play another land and a second creature. Alright, so... Predation can have a look. Legion Angel, definitely a nice one to take before they get more copies. Alright. So I've got a bunch of flying creatures we need to deal with. Lofty Denial could be annoying. But it feels like we've got the tools to get to the late game. And then... 
Probably just hold Soul Shatter, although I kind of want to empty my hand for Castle. Probably should have just cast it before they hit me. Alright, opponent counters anyway. It's perfect. Predation can take Borrower, although they can bounce in response and then it doesn't work. So that's probably not the best plan. Instead, I could draw with Castle or activate Barons. Probably need to draw to find answers to Brazen Borrower. So where does that leave me? Can get back Cling to Dust or activate Castle after playing a land. And then I might be better off playing Predation Tapped before activating Castle. Opponent could have bounced this in response to make me lose one extra life. Expert won't do anything because of Hushbringer. Watcher of the Spheres means they can still play Brazen Borrower end of turn, so we're bound to take quite a bit of damage. Another castle to draw. Can get back Cling to Dust to gain 3 life as well if needed. Think activating castle is still probably the way to go. And we managed to successfully set up our ambush, as the opponent's Hushbringer prevents the Watcher of the Spheres trigger. Is Turgrid too little too late? It might be. Second so play Turgrid. And then cling to dust to gain life. Hope to draw some cards that synergize with Turgrid. Lantern itself is not going to do enough. If they have a lofty denial in hand, I mean I can pay for it, but then I'm dead on board, so I need to cling to dust instead. And I guess I should probably just do it now. Could have used that life gain earlier. So we're a bit short on replaying Kling. So I guess Tome draw, see what we hit. Rankle. Alright, Rankle keeps me alive. Has to block Brazen Borber. So, probably fine to draw with Tome instead of Scrying. Ooh, another Kling is huge. And then uh, Crawling Barons can get in there. Could also still activate Castle. Pay for Lofty. So 
So do I want to activate cancel or put two counters on crawling barons as a question here? Probably draw with cancel. It doesn't really change the clock for the Hushbringers. Expert doesn't do anything. So draw with Tome. And doesn't do it. So I think that means we're dead. If activate cancel, we're just dead. Yeah, just needed one more turn of Tome gaining us for life to take over. If there was a way for us to put our cards in graveyard to get back Link to Dust, that would be nice, but... Yeah, it's not a May ability to put the counters on Barons. Otherwise I could maybe, like, let it die. And then uh, have an extra card in graveyard to get back Kling. Let's see what we would have drawn. Swamp. Alright, so we, yeah, didn't find our Lantern or Turgrid to help us take over the game. And the flyers eventually got to us. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Two discard creatures plus banner to apply a bit of pressure. Hopefully draw some mana sinks. Maybe like a castle Lochthwain could be nice. Facing a Fireblade a Charger. So it could be Warrior Tribal, or maybe just Mono Red Aggro. Looks like Warriors. Disciple's a good roadblock here. Can jump in front of Hallowblade for them to discard yet another card. Alright. Guess we'll trade for Charger now. Banner will make it so we can still potentially jump in front of Hallowblade. And we have four copies of Soul Shatter, which would be a great answer to the Hallowblade as well. I wonder if we want to Banner here. Yeah, I think developing our mana to set up Turgrid, maybe. We'll see. Possible we just go Disciple plus Expert first, anyway. Another Axe. Alright. So I have to play a Chum Blocker now. So, Disciple. Opponent was holding a land, but we get their last card anyway. Another Hello Blade. Alright, so we can buy some time. Hopefully they don't draw Mall of the Skyclaves. So if I double block, I force them to discard. I think I would rather chump, play Turgrid, chump, and then maybe do something to force them to discard, which could also be nice with Turgrid in play. I guess we'll block like this, which could be useful for Expert having an extra creature type. Ooh, Soul Shatter. Alright. We could take a bit of a risk here, play Turgrid first, and then Soul Shatter next turn. If they top deck Mall of the Skyclaves, we're dead. Soul Shatter Expert would be the safer play, but the sweeter play is to get Turgrid in play first. 
So we're gonna go with a sweeter play. Land, Nahiri. All right. I am the last of the ancients, and my will. I guess I can kill Disciple, force me to block with Turgrid, but then they don't have a card to discard to Halloblade, so we just trade. From the likes of you. And Soul Shatter still deals with Nahiri. All right, not a perfect outcome. Could have definitely been better, but we're still doing okay. I think I will scry here. Just take our draw step. A three powered acquisitions expert. Pretty nice. Opponent had an Ember Cleave they couldn't cast. Ooh, Blade Master. It's kind of scary. So, what now? Pretty much we'll have to chump with experts. Can dig for a removal spell, although I can probably just draw. I guess there's an argument for Play Castle, cling to dust to gain life. If they equip, this would be. Five power double strike, so it would still kill me in one hit. So I don't know if the life gain's really all that relevant, so let's draw first here. Alright, perfect. So we'll just kill it. Attack, and then I might be better off using Castle here at the cost of two life. Got more removal. Would love to find Turgrid now. Can play it as a lantern to quickly end the game. So get rid of a non-creature card. And it still adds a bit of power and toughness to the board. And level up our crawling barons. And our opponent explodes. So didn't get to live the dream with Turgrid, but still worked out in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Serrated Scorpion, so maybe some sort of sacrifice deck. We'll play Predation Tapped, could use the extra mana here with Double Tome. Plenty of ways to spend our mana. Couple options next turn, could play Banner, could play Tamp Predation plus a 2-drop. Discards Bloodsheaf's Thirst. Yeah, I don't mind playing Banner here. And then Disciple can jump in from a Fo Strider. Zero Point's probably playing the new Black Rat Uncommon Saga, which lets him sacrifice a creature to deal three, and then reanimate something on the final chapter. Rocks off for now. I think I get rid of Predation and then just keep Double Tome to try and play a longer game. And the opponent's mana costs seem pretty low, so Predation has a chance to miss. I 
Villatrites plus Croxa, pretty nice 1-2 combo. Probably still fine trading here. Ooh, Turgrid. Turgrid is nice and also punishes the Sacrifice deck. Think we might play it. Do we expect any removal? I guess my opponent could have the Akron War to steal Turgrid, which would be pretty bad. So it's not without risk. So maybe we're better off using the Lantern as a win condition, use Dome as card draw. Yeah, and then for now play Disciple plus Tome. If my opponent was empty-handed, I would probably run out the creature here, but... Seems a little too risky if they have a way to steal my creature. And yeah, there we see the Akron War. Just a 1-1 on the opponent's side of the battlefield, at least. Do I keep land? I think I do. And then now... I can play Turgrid as a creature. And then they'll have to sacrifice Disciple in response, otherwise I could steal it. Could also wait with playing Turgrid until the final chapter of the Akron War. So we get to gain control of it. Maybe that's even better. So we'll take a bit of damage. If they manage to get back Crocs, I can discard a land or whatever we draw with Tomb. So, opponent passes. So, probably just gonna play Turgrid, activate two. See how this plays out. Opponent waited to sacrifice Disciple, and they're gonna have to re Turgrid now. Discards Thirst. And we'll get to steal the Akron War. I would like to gain control of your Woe Strider. And our opponent concedes. Turgrid's passive ability here to steal Sagas strikes again. So yeah, we've seen Turgrid do a lot of work in today's games. Sadly, didn't get to play Lantern as much, but it is just kind of a bonus side. We're mostly trying to build around the creature half, and then Lantern can be a nice finisher in more controlling matchups where we expect Turgrid to die, or if we draw a second copy, it's nice to be able to play Lantern. So it's not too surprising that we didn't get to see Lantern, but in some of those games, once we have a lot of mana, you can imagine Lantern putting in a lot of work as a finisher, as it's essentially four mana to deal three damage if the opponent's empty-handed. And then another card we could consider from Kaldheim is the new 4-mana Mythic Rare Valkyrie, which in testing didn't really perform as much as I would have liked, but it definitely has a lot of synergy in the deck since we can sacrifice our 2-mana creatures to the ability to make the opponent sacrifice, gives us a life-linking flyer, which could have been quite nice against the blue-white flyers that we faced, so that's a card worth considering as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.